charge for that painting, the cost of lapis blue is a separate charge. So if you were really wealthy and you wanted your portrait done, and you wanted everybody to know that you were rich, you would say, put a lot of blue in it. Now, it was such an important color, there was a um, worldwide competition to make synthetic lapis blue. And a French chemist did in the 1700s. Identical in color, life fast, everything practically the same, less expensive, and you all use it today. What is that color called? Ultra. Ultramarine blue. All right. Now, the next thing they did was they started glazing with transparent colors and a medium, and then they varnished. So that's kind of the structure of the painting. You hang it up on the wall. Light comes in, and immediately the light starts to bounce around inside the painting, and then back to you, the viewer, instantaneously. But some of that light gets trapped inside the painting. So you look at a Caravaggio and it's glowing like it's lit from within. It's because transparent colors and the glazing technique, that's what happens. Let's look at the Impressionists. They did the same exact thing up until the underpainting. All they did was a quick sketch. And then they just started painting with opaque colors generally. A brush mark, a brush mark, a scumble. A brush mark, a scumble, a brush mark, a scumble, a brush mark, a brush mark, a brush mark. They're done in one day. hundred years later, it sells for $40 million. We hang it on the wall. Light does not penetrate so well. It just goes to the top surface, wherever that top surface is, and reflects back to the viewer. Different kind of color, because of how light goes in and bounces out. Today, we do both techniques simultaneously in the same painting with great freedom. So, who was the person that went from here to here? You guys study art history? Who's credited for this? I'll give you a hint. Whoever they credited for this, it's wrong. That's not how inventions go. It's never one person. It's never that smooth. Manet is often credited for this. And I thought, oh, Manet, okay. And then I was fortunate enough to go see Velasquez up close and personal. It's just a bunch of little marks. And then you step back and you see the inbred Spanish royalty. So I don't know who the first person was. Now in terms of an idea of what Impressionism was supposed to be and why they were painting that way, that's different. But the act of painting like that was a slow burn, I think. That's my take. What do you think? I agree. Yeah. That's how things work. So I have been demonstrating with Gamblin's premier paint. It's called Artist Grade Oil. Compared to other paints that are premium paints, much less expensive for two reasons. One, it's made here. You don't have the cost of uh, shipping, things like that. Uh, other reason, you don't have the fluctuation of the euro or the yen. Uh, so this is a really high quality paint and pretty good price. But, let's say you wanted to paint with a much less expensive paint. Gamma has a paint called 1980. I have here a tube of it. 1980. It's called 1980 because that's the year Gamma started. And 1980 is an inexpensive paint for beginning artists that is, in a sense, revolutionary. Because it's a different concept than other what they call student grade paints. I'm going to try to show you what's going on. Nineteen eighty. AGO. So, to make a really good professional paint, what you try to do is take really good pigment, a really good binder, mix them together, make a really good paint. You could use too much paint, excuse me, too much pigment, and the paint is brittle. So it's not the amount of pigment, even though you want a high load. For a student grade paint, what a lot of companies did was they said, well, 
we don't want it to be expensive, so what we'll do is um, we'll take cheap pigments and cheap binder and throw a lot of filler in there and, and um, make this paint. It doesn't work very well. But if you go back to the Renaissance, their sketching oil was a paint that was basically the same as the professional grade, but just less pigment with a little bit of filler. So this paint is the same pretty much as this paint, except less pigment, which means that if I decided to make a tint and stayed in the 1980 range, and then decided to make a tint with the, I have to try to get the same amount of uh, proportion, and make a tint with the ninth AGO, it's going to be the same tint pretty much if I stay in the system. If I compare the reds, well this red is really, really opaque, and this red is more transparent because of less pigment. But this paint, 1980, is a great paint to paint with. And what's remarkable about it, I didn't realize this, is not only does it function better than these other stupid, great, stupid paints, it's less expensive. So it's one of those rare instances where the better product actually is less expensive. So for beginning students, 1980 is a nice paint. You can intermix it with the other paint. Nothing bad chemically is going to happen. But there is an irony in art materials that's not something to laugh about. It's something to cry about. That irony is Premium grade, or what we call professional grade art materials, not only give you a better result, they're physically easier to use. So you just start painting, maybe you have a part-time job, you don't have the amount of money you're going to have 10 years from now, you go, okay, I'll, I'll save money, I'll buy less expensive paint. It's harder to use. I forget about the result, it's just physically harder to use. Using the student grade brush, really hard to use. So just bear that in mind, that when you're struggling with something, you know, how do I say this? It might be the materials and not you. <laughs> yes, definitely. But right now, I view that there's two different ways of learning, basically. One is what you guys are going through right now. You're an adult, or trying to be. You're taking art. You don't know that much about how to do all this stuff. So your brain has ideas that you physically can't do yet. You get frustrated. What's the other method? It's called the apprenticeship method. You're seven years old. Your parents drop you off at the local painter. And for two or three years, you sweep the floors. And for two or three years, you mix the pigments. And for a couple of years, you stretch the canvases. And then maybe you start doing your technique. And maybe you're there for 20 years, and by the time you're 25, and you have done nothing creative. But you know everything about the Everything. And then you open up your arms to the end and you your own arms. Frustration on the other end. So there's two methods of learning. We still have the apprenticeship method for like plumbers and electricians and stuff like that. But for art, not so much. So just bear in mind, your frustration comes because you didn't start when you were seven years old every day. <laughs> And I have a young friend, she's 14, she's a ballerina. That's what she does, since she's four. Just dances every day. And I asked her last year, I said, uh, can't you take Sunday off? And she said, no, my muscles will forget. <laughs> and uh, we have muscle memory in painting. So that if you are drawing and painting a lot, it's easier because basically muscle memory. So uh, it would be, you probably get better results if you painted 10 hours a week for six months as opposed to one hour a week for 30 years. I mean, you have the same amount of time spent, but the more concentrated <coughs> effort, the better the results. Okay. Let me talk about mediums because that's something that you guys struggle with. For some reason, people get flipped out when it comes time to add something into the paint. And all a medium is, 
is something we add to the paint and change how it works. You want it to dry fast or slow or be shiny or have a texture. You're just adding something to the paint that will make it easier for us to use. And I'm going to talk about that now. And I'm just wondering how far I'm going to digress here. I'm going to digress for one second. Since you're still awake, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> 